Hi guys, welcome again to Barker's Barbecue. Today I'm going to show you how I get perfect pork crackle on my leg roast every time. All right guys, let's get started on this uh, pork roast. So, uh, first thing I'm going to show you, so basically I've taken it out of the bag and I've taken the bulk of the moisture off it with some paper towel. Now the first thing I'm going to use is this uh, little jacquard thing here. So this pierces the skin without puncturing it. It's got these really sharp little needles on the top and if you're worried about trying to find this device, you can find them on eBay for about seven bucks. All you need to do is search pork belly needle um, and you'll find them from seven bucks. This one I think was uh, 15 or something cause, just because it's got that guard on there. And basically the first thing I do is just do this to all of the skin. So all over it, just to sort of puncture that skin. You really can't do this too many times. Just everywhere, all over the thing. See, I'm hitting this really hard, but there's no, there's no damage or trauma on the skin. It's all invisible. You can see tiny little pinprick holes. Probably the camera can't pick them up, but um, that's what you want. You want tiny little holes all over this thing. Some, the butchers obviously scored it a little bit, but that's cool. All right, so next step here, we're gonna use this table salt. Just normal, normal table salt, nothing special. And you wanna cover this, you, you wanna cover the skin so you can barely even see the skin anymore. You wanna put so much salt on there that, that it's just absolutely covered from one side to the other. So start in the middle, just layer it on. And you're gonna waste a lot of salt doing this, but salt's pretty cheap anyway, so, so all good. You want this to turn out as best as it possibly can. So just everywhere, all over the skin. If you angle it up like this, it'll let it settle on there and then hopefully stick once you lay it back down again. I'll turn it around. Just as much as you possibly can on that skin. Get it all over there. All right, that's about where we want it. We want it absolutely caked in salt. Obviously there's a critical step with this. You've got to make sure you take all this salt off before you put it on the cooker or your skin crackle is going to be terrible. So, right, that's, uh, that's the preparation done. It's 24 hours before I'm going to cook this. So it's, you know, 4.30 on the day before. Um, and basically what I'm going to do with this overnight, before I go to bed, I'm going to press some paper towel just on here. I'm not going to remove the salt, just going to press paper towel on this. That's going to draw that excess moisture out of the salt as it's drawing it out of the skin and allow it to draw more moisture out as, as the time goes. So I'm just going to sit this in the fridge, leave it open, uncovered, and let the fridge also help with that drying process. So we'll be back in about 24 hours and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, so it's been about 24 hours since, uh, since I put this pork in. Uh, so if you want to come up close and have a look, the skin's gotten quite hard. Um, it's got, um, you know, it doesn't have any bounce in it like, it like it would have before, straight out of the bag. It's got, uh, that's what you want. You want the skin to have a bit of, a bit of firmness to it. Uh, you don't want it to have much give when you're pushing in. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is um, skewer this thing, just so get it on our, because we're going we're to put this in our um, Weber rotisserie. So glue from the back here. Pushing it through the middle there. There we go. Try and get it as central as you can. Center it on the, uh, on the skewer there. Bring these in, right there, and same on this side, and there we go. I've got that nice and secured in the center of our thing now, obviously. Before I put this on, I'm going to rub all this salt off. Um, you definitely don't want to leave that on there because you're going to get really stupidly salty crackle and you'll be really mad. So um, yeah, we're going to go stick this on the Weber and get this, uh, and get this thing going. All right, guys. So we've got our um, pork pork leg on the uh, on the spit now. So we're going to go ahead and stick this in. So I've got the charcoal really, really hot. I'm just going to poke this in here. Careful not to lose any arm hairs while you're doing this because it's because it's hot as hell. And uh, we'll just turn this on. Whoop. 
Might help if I turn the wall socket on first, but yeah, there we go. So this will spin away for, you know, maybe a good hour and a half or thereabouts. We'll come check on this shortly and see how the crackle's traveling. All right, guys, so this has been going for just over half an hour at about 230 degrees Celsius. As soon as I put the lid on, it got to about 200. It slowly crept up to about 230 over the last half hour, and it's just popped back to about 220 now. So it's had a little range there. Didn't quite get up to 250, but um, still plenty hot enough. So we're gonna have a quick look at this now just to um, just to see how the crackle is registering. So it's, uh, I'm just gonna quickly probe the temp first because we've got the skin side this side. So it's still probing at 93, which is nowhere near where we need it to be. But when you come around here, you'll see what I mean about this skin. So it's got to get that honey color. It's starting to get this nice browning effect from the salt and whatnot, but this, um, this is just what you want. So um, the crackle's really starting to, uh, to establish itself on there. And, um, but we still have some ways to go before it's at the temp we want it to be at, because right now it's at about 195 to 100 thereabouts in parts. So we'll pop the lid back on. We'll keep an eye on this so it doesn't blacken too much. We want this to be a nice honey color um, all the way across. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye on it and see how we travel. All right guys, so we're about, um, about an hour and a half into this cook all together. And um, this is sitting right where we want it. So let's have a look. So temp wise, you want the inside to be about 145, thereabouts. We're sitting at 148, that's totally cool. No problem at all, very close to where we need it. So uh, we're just gonna get this off skewer here, back onto our chopping board, and we're going to take this inside and give it a bit of a rest for a moment. Alright guys, so this has been sitting on the bench top for about 10 or 15 minutes, just resting, just uh, coming down a little bit in temp, so um, I just want to cover off on the setup in the charcoal um, firstly, so basically I just filled two charcoal baskets to the brim with red hot charcoal. So a full chimney, I used the heat beads lump charcoal if you wanna know exactly what I used. And I just had a chimney of that going red, red hot and then straight in the baskets. And that's what gave me that 200 plus degree temperature. Cause you wanna try and aim to get above 200 degrees to get this kind of result. Um, so the two things for pork crackle, two key things, high heat and dry skin. So the salt gave us the dry skin and um, the large amount of red hot charcoal gave us that high heat that we needed. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's um, let's go ahead and slice into this. So, as you can see, it's come up that beautiful honey color that I was talking about. Really nice, really nice color across the whole thing, and this sound as well should be nice and hard. So, it's um, that beautiful Spanish style. I think they call it chicharrón, and uh, don't ask me to spell it, but basically that's how. That's how your crackle should come up. It should be raised from the skin. You can see there's gaps under here before it actually hits the, um, before it hits the actual meat. So that's just how you want it. You want it to lift up off the skin. So let's, um, let's start. So we'll just get this bit meat lip off the front here. I always recommend using a serrated knife as well because it just helps you get through that, um, that, that crackle without, um, without sort of damaging a straight blade knife. So one really important thing as well is that your crackle should be really light and it's, it's difficult to describe because you, 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 uh, you don't want a hard thick bottom to it. You want the whole thing to be like a potato chip sort of thing. So I'll give this a taste now. So the whole thing is nice and crispy and airy. You've not got that hard, that hard bottom to it. You want it to lift up off the skin and crisp from there. So, yeah, it's got this nice layer of salt in it too because having the salt on there for so long just gave it that really nice salted flavor, just how you want your crackle to be. So we'll cut, we'll cut off a couple more slices. Yes, that is just how I wanted it. So it's getting a little bit more it's getting a little bit more like uh, like how I wanted it to be. Like in here, you can see, if you look up nice and close, you'll see that crackle is crackled edge to edge. There's no hard, no hard bottom. 
crackles open just like that. Mmm, that's really good. All right. Sorry guys, but I think I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to start digging into this. All right guys, thanks so much for watching my video on pork leg crackle today. I hope you really got something out of it. You know, pork crackle is one of those things that, um, you know, can really be a challenge to get right every time. Uh, even if you do everything right, it can still not go your way. So there's a few little uh, one percenters in this video that I put, uh, I put to you guys just to help make sure you can ensure that happens every time. So obviously the two main things are dry skin and high heat. So uh, make sure you, um, you go ahead and um, do that each time. So uh, just to let you know as well, I'm actually on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. So I've got some more videos on there. So please feel free to watch, like and subscribe to see what else I'm up to. And if there's anything else you'd like, you'd like me to cook, just go ahead and let me know in the comments section or just get in touch. Thanks again.